If I were to ask you the five most important things in your life right now, what would they be? Depending on our age, some of those items might be faith or religion, family, health, relationships, friends, job opportunities, or a reputation. Now, let me ask the question in a slightly different way. If your house is on fire and you have two minutes to get out of that house, and we are assuming all people can get out of the house, what three things would you rescue as you leave that burning house? Again, depending on our age, it might be a pet, photographs, cell phone, wallet, or a favorite treasured object. I don't know what you would have on your list, but whatever those items are, they probably would be things that you consider essential to your happiness, survival, and security. I'm also guessing that while they aren't those five most important things that we thought about two seconds ago, they are something that kind of falls into that same area. For example, one of the items I probably would grab would be my cell phone. I know our dog is safe because that would be the first thing Pete would go for. <laughs> But I would probably grab the cell phone, simply because that is the thing that while I can't say is one of my most important objects, it is something that I use to keep connected to my friends and family. And I have to admit, in my age, that I probably don't remember my kids' phone numbers, and I would be really desperate to let them know I was safe. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. From today's gospel is a statement that's always given me pause. It must have challenged our gospel writers too because it's not only found in Luke's uh, gospel today, but it's also found in Mark's gospel on the Sermon of the Mount. Most of us associate a heart with love. But in Greek, which is where Luke writes his gospel, in Greek, the word cardia, or heart, means the inner person, the core of our total being, the center of both our physical and spiritual self, our focus or inner spirit, or our soul, will be on what we treasure most. It is not so much that treasure follows our hearts as it is that our hearts follow what we treasure. In the ongoing war against terrorism, it is often said that the best way to get to the heart of the terrorist network is to follow their trail of money. To know, in a similar way, to know where a person's heart is, we simply have to follow that trail of treasures. We all have things that we treasure, whether we are a millionaire or living in poverty. In fact, Jesus directed this passage to his disciples, most of whom were fishermen. They didn't have a lot of worldly belongings. The implication is that everyone has something to treasure. Every human being considers some things as very valuable. It might be wealth, it might be people, it might be something less tangible, but we all have things that we focus our time and our energy into. The thing we may treasure changes probably over time, and while we may treasure one thing, we oftentimes don't prove that, and we put our energies and our time into something that isn't a treasure. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the book, The Deathly Hallows. This is the last book of the original Harry Potter series written by J.K. Rowling. In this, the story of Ariana, who is Professor Dumbledore's sister, is killed in a wizarding duel. For those not familiar with the books and movie, 
Professor Dumbledore is an ancient and powerful wizard and leader of Hogwarts School of Wizardry. Earlier in his life, he buried Ariana next to his mother, or next to her mother, and has inscribed on the tomb, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be too. I always found it fascinating that Art J.K. Rowling chose a statement from Luke or Mark to include in a children's story. And I would bet that most kids have never realized that they are reading a passage from the gospel when they read that particular statement. The circumstances surrounding the death of Dumbledore's sister helps put up that statement and that use of that statement in context. As a young man, Dumbledore's desire for the most powerful, powerful of earthly treasures, the Deathly Hallows, ultimately led to his sister's death. Ariana was this tragic character in the Harry Potter series. Her life was one of immeasurable pain, and she was under the care and guardianship of her brother Dumbledore. And Dumbledore failed her. He was incapable of fulfilling his duties to care for her while pursuing his ambitions for power. His failure, which led to her death, helped Dumbledore com comprehend one of the truths of where your treasure is, there your heart will be. It is only after her death that he realized that his treasure, his sister, wasn't what he was pursuing. And he puts this inscription on the tomb to serve as a reminder and a warning to focus attention and time on things of value. In our world today, it is so easy to get caught up in what the world values. And for some of you, this, these next series of questions are probably going to seem very familiar. I use it often when I work with kids. I ask the question, who are the 10 most richest people in the world? Who are 10 Heisman Trophy winners? Who, have, who has won the 10 Nobel Prizes in the last year, 10 years? Anyone know who the last Miss America pageant winner was? Who's won the best Oscar for the best movie this last year? I had to look up and Google, by the way, Bill Gates is the richest man in the world this year. But without looking it up, I had no idea. And I'm guessing most of us in this room probably didn't know either. The point is, none of us, or very few of us, remember the headliners of yesterday. These are the not second-rate people. These are the best, the brightest, the most beautiful, the wealthiest, the most athletic, and we can't recall their name. And yet, I bet if I ask you to think back and list 10 people who were influential in your lives, that list would be very quickly brought to mind. And I think that's because the people that we remember, the people who were there during a difficult life, time in our lives, be it a friend, a mentor, or a teacher, those people are not the ones who are rich and influential, but they are the ones who treasure us, who care about us. Fame, education, wealth, beauty, talent, positions of power are easily forgotten, despite the emphasis the world puts on them. There are some things that can never be forgotten, such things as faith, love, generosity, kindness, empathy, are of enduring value. These qualities can't be obtained by wealth or high IQ. We don't become empathetic by having a facelift plastic surgery, or dressing in the best clothes. These are not the result of chance or accident. They are things we hold dear, our treasures, and they determine the amount of time, energy, and resources we devote to them. These are the things that are number one in life. Paul, today, describes faith as the conviction of things not seen. And then he further writes to the Hebrews that about Abraham's faith. 
Abraham valued his faith. He valued it so much that he gave up his family, his friends, his culture, his home. And he travels to a strange place, strange people, strange customs. He did this because he trusted and valued the promise that God made him. I know I often need a course correction, as it seems that the things I truly do value come second in my life and not first. I usually put the least effort towards them because I'm human. The things that I really don't value are the things that draw my attention. And I think that's one of the messages Jesus was sharing with his disciples and us today. Are we on the right course? Are the things that we value where our heart is. I love how Jesus ends his message to his disciples today with a gentle reminder that if we do need a course correction, do it today and not tomorrow. Because as Dumbledore discovered with his sister, there may not be a tomorrow. And we don't know when the Son of Man is coming. In the name of the Lord, amen.